with a 16 CL projector. Yeah, you've seen me do these before, and we're going to do another one. Well, this one's going to be a little different, though. We're going to clean it up in a way we never cleaned it. We're going to clean and lubricate it. Um, inside here, there's a, a lot of things that happen when you, um, when you turn this knob over here. And it's all actually activated by a bar that moves across, and it actually turns and moves things into position. It's a really cool, well-designed out projector. I mean, you know, I mean, all projectors have to be well-designed, let's face it. Otherwise, they wouldn't work, right? But the idea is that once you turn this knob, a whole bunch of rollers and things move into place. And when they do that, that, that even makes the thing run. So it's pretty cool stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take it all apart in an area, like I said, before, we've never done before to that level. Um, in addition, we're going to replace the um, take-up belt. Um, really easy job to do. Just had to thread it around in the back. But um, I had to borrow this take up, the take-up belt from this machine to put onto the CT-1000 that we did. And that's another thing I'll mention. The CT-1000 I did worked out really good except for the fact the sound was a little bit out of sync. And once I did what cleaning I'm going to show you I did here and relubrication I did here, uh, that problem went away. So I think this would be good for sound sync issues if you have that problem. On, on the CT-1000 or the uh, Elmo 16CL because they're both the same projector. Um, and uh, so that may be a good uh, thing for us to go through. Okay? And incidentally, the CT-1000 that I used uh, last time is my go-to projector. I've been using it ever since I did, the, did that uh, last cleaning and everything else like that. And everything at that projector, the one we did in the last video, is still my main one to use. So I've been showing films and showing films to my family and I actually leave it at the bottom of the table or on the other end of this table over there. I leave it there all the time. And we just turn it on, put a film on and watch a movie anytime we feel like. So here we go. This is the Elmo 16CL. And we're going to do a real thorough job on this guy. So we're going to, first thing we have to do is take this apart. So we're going to take the cover off of it. And take the other cover off of it. And then it's, a, it's supposed to be a 2.5 millimeter hex key um, Allen wrench. But when I went and pulled that out of the package, it didn't fit. So here's a 2, a two, two millimeter one. And just put that in there and turn it. And that whole knob just pulls right off. So, so I'm not sure about the dis the difference in the size, but um, but there you go. That's what it took to get it. So just have a diff couple of different hex metric hexes around and get that off of there. Okay, so that gets you to the point where you can um, unscrew the bottom screw here. put that over here and we'll unscrew this top screw over here and that'll remove this front cover for us okay which is attached to this one over here all right so next thing we're going to do is we need to get that guy off and um, he is held on by a screw here And that comes right off, as you can see. So there's that off. Get that put him aside. That one screw stayed in the package in the thing, so we're going to leave it there for now, so we don't lose it. Okay, so now we got a chance to look inside and see how this looks. So what we have now, we have the knob that can be pulled off, and then we have the uh, tone control knob, which also can be pulled off, set aside. And then we have this plate here, which kind of gets in the way of this, this bar, so we're going to take that off as well. Set those guys aside as well. Okay, so this gets us to the inner workings of the machine. Um, you can see the whole thing. This is activated here when the knob is turned. It 
it puts everything in motion. You can see how that how that moves when you push it that way to forward. And you can see how it works when you push it backwards. It doesn't really do anything to the bottom down here. But uh, that's how that works. And um, so there'll be points when we actually have to turn the knob too to get to certain things. So we'll see that when we get into it more. But uh, yeah, you want to leave the knob so that you can still get a little bit of uh, maybe not tighten it up, but put it back on there so it's removable. So like tighten it all the way up and then pull it back a little bit, and that gives it a good good move movement on it so you can move it to do things and then you can pull it off anytime you need to. I'm going to take a Ziploc bag and I'll put all these parts we've been using except for the handle, all these parts we've taken off, I'm going to stick them into the Ziploc bag. All the screws, everything like that. And that will do is that will keep the parts from getting away from us. That's the one thing that I have a lot of problems with is that the parts start getting away from us. So I'll put that aside. So this bar right here um, has got a roller on the back of it and we've seen that before in previous videos. Um, what you want to do with that is, is you want to get that, that guy off. He's got to come off. It's one of the pieces that have to come off to do this whole job. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that off by just putting a little screwdriver inside there and twisting it and that'll pull the clip off. And you want to make sure that you keep your finger on the other side of the clip because if it pops it'll pop and go this way and go down in the machine and you have to deal with that. So you don't want to do that but we'll put him in our bag with the rest of our stuff. Make sure he's out of the way and safe. And um, then this whole bar just pulls right off and it's I think I might have lubricated this more than I thought I did back in the day. But at any rate, um, we're still going to do it anyway. But then that brings this bar off to the side and you can put him aside for right now. And uh, we'll move on to the next part. Using a 10 millimeter wrench, we're going to take these two guys off. Pull them off. You just loosen them with the wrench and you literally can just spin them right off by hand. And our next step is to take off the uh, this little bracket here. It's got two screws with washers below. So we got to remember that when we go to put it back together again. And if you think I'm doing this kind of haphazardly, it's probably not wrong. Um, the um, I've done this before a couple times, twice before I think. So we'll just do that. I know we got to get all this stuff off of it, so. What order we do it in, I don't think that's as important. Okay. This is actually an activator, so you have to keep this. Looks like it's got dog hair in it. Um, so you got to keep that, make sure that we can put that back in place again. A lot of this stuff, you know, one little piece here activates this here and activates that up there. It's pretty cool how this stuff works, and I, I really am, really love the design of the way this machine was designed originally. Okay, this little thing activates um, other, other gears up top, I think. So we're going to take him off. He's sort of a part of the uh, machine here. And he's got little washers, they're little silver washers, you got to remember that too. And that's the thing, is when you're doing this, make sure you take a um, take pictures. You use your cell phone. You can just get some pictures of all these pieces as you take them apart, so you know where they go back and what screws they use to put them back in together. So make sure we put all the stuff that goes right in the bag, okay? So don't, you know, I'm going to put it right in the bag. I'm not going to waste any time Waiting to put it someplace else. I'm going to put it right in the bag. Okay, we have another actuator right here, and it actuates this arm over here. So we're going to take that guy off, too. Again, two of those screws with silver washers. And you'll notice that the thing sort of, things sort of start to snap and move. Um, don't worry about it too much. You'll have to move it back again. But uh, what happened was is that the pressure off this came off of it. And this moved out of place. So you can see that, um, yeah, you can see it. I think you can think that's kind of out of shot. Um, you can see that this actuator over up here was being pushed in by that actuator we had there. So when this, this, when this loses its tension, this spring bounces back up because there's a big spring right here holding it in place. So we're just going to, don't worry about it. It's okay. We got this. And we put the parts in the bag. So I'm going to show you what now the one part that I think is actually the worst part to try to do this job. This is a little bar that pushes this bar, it moves this particular mechanism here out of the way. See that going like that? 
yeah, you can see it. So this bar under here is actually held with two screws on top. So the two screws are hold onto this bracket from the bottom, and it's a nightmare to get back together again. But I don't care. I'm just going to take it out. Again, it'll be annoying to put back in, and we'll probably talk about it, but I won't be doing it on camera. I can guarantee that. You see that it kind of falls out of place, that spring kicks in, and um, he just kind of comes running out of there. I get the screw out too. It pays to have a few nails. Okay. And again, we're going to put that all in the bag. That little bracket and the two screws. There's two little tiny screws for that. Now this one's a little tricky. There's a screw back here that you can only get to if this is put into almost the full full position of uh, being all the way on. So you gotta do is get your screwdriver down in there and just kind of move this so this gets the this part of the bar out of the way for you. And there's a little inset in there. And you can just unscrew that from there and get him out of there. Again, one not, well not one of the easier ones to do, but um, I mean, you just put it back in position, get rid of the handle again. So now we're going to put the handle back on, and we're going to switch it to the forward position. That's so we can get to this bottom screw down here. Um, he's he's in the way. Handle. We take the handle off. It's going to make it easier for us to do everything else, and. Um, just uh, go down. There's four screws. Here. These two here and the bottom one. And we'll come back when we're done. Alright, so here we are. Moment of truth, right? So we're going to pull this all out. It literally comes out from underneath this uh, cam over here. And the whole bar is this that easily removed. So the whole, is, the whole thing is out. This gives us access to all these other parts where the rollers are. Um, yeah, and you know, I know this is a lot of work, but the point is, is we're going to do is we're going to lubricate back here. You can see there's there's been grease under here and it's old and we're going to get rid of all that old grease. We're going to clean that up and we're going to uh, make this all nice and clean again. So let and, and we're going to put new grease in place of it. So the new grease we're going to use won't go bad like the old grease does because it's the age of it. So it's a, it's a new modern technology. So that's what we're going to do here next. So there you go. That's the removal of the bar. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this little E-clip or C-clip, whatever they call it. And you do is take, again, put the screwdriver into place and just turn it away. And it should pull it off. Like that. The idea is not to sh shoot it across the floor. Okay, so then there it is. There's a little clip comes off. We'll put that in our bag with our other parts. And then we can just lift off that wheel. Now this is how you would change them out. This particular one has um, already been changed. So, so you can see that it's, um, it's still a new type of roller. One of the new replacement ones that Larry Urbanski sells. So this one here is uh, is a new one. So we're not going to change that, but we are going to lubricate these because good possibility that years ago when I did this about six years ago, um, I didn't do the right lubrication on that. So or five years ago. So the next phase is going to be taking out the uh, roller here, which is the one that has the nut on it. So we'll take that off by just getting a. It's a 730 seconds or a 6 millimeter, either one of those will work fine. Um, you just want to lo loosen it up and then you can just pull it out. And be very careful not to drop any of this. There is a washer below it as well. So we're going to remove that and then remove the washer carefully. And then we move this, this wheel off. And um, you'll see that there's two sides to that. There's the bottom side of it that's got the uh, um, it's got like an indent in it, and that part goes down, and it fits over this hub down here. So you look to see this little little nub at the bottom, and that's how it fits on top of there. So we're going to lubricate this shaft, and um, 
and we'll uh, clean off any oil that's on it from before. Um, looks like it was oiled, but it's kind of uh, it's getting old too. So we'll use a better oil. Okay, so now we have two more to take off these other two rollers. Now this roller was attached to the bar, to the metal bar, and I didn't take it off of the spring. I and mean, you could take it off the spring, but we'll we'll get the, the, the little clip off of that, and we'll also get the one off of this one as well. And you would do this, you know, normally we. You have to take it off. We had took it off earlier, but um, that's how it works. So we'll just do that, and we'll take them off, and we'll come back. Okay. So the next step is going to be this shaft is, can come off of here. This um, this um, point right here can come off, and we're going to take that off so we can clean this um, easier. And it's easy to take this off when it's all apart like this. Normally, you wouldn't do that. This would not be something you would be doing. We're going to clean this off, get any of the old oil or grease that I used before, and uh, then we'll put it back together again and we'll show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this shaft right here, and we'll do that by spraying a little bit of spray of the uh, Mean Green, which is a good degreaser, and we're going to put that on here, and then we're just going to ro rotate around, and we'll get that all cleaned off, and you'll see the dirt comes right off, all the grease and grime from the previous time we did this. Again, this will be easier when I have two hands, but uh, that's what we'll do. And then I'll clean off all that, all that dirt, all that old grease. Next up, we're going to use some silicone oil in a little bottle here, and we're going to put it on the shaft. Just put it on a couple of different places on the side. And there'll be a little bit of extra, extra leakage from going down there so we'll just get the bottom of it don't want to hit the top and then we just replace the collar and then now that's going to be well lubricated that's silicone oil we used so we put some mean green on a paper towel and we just rub it around the outside of the shaft to get the old lubrication off of it like we did before Okay, and you can see there's some, some black dirt there from the lubrication. It may be from before, or maybe something on there from the last time it was done. Move that out. Okay, then we're going to pull the shaft back, and we're going to drop a little bit more oil on it. Some fresh oil. Okay. We're going to sop up the extra at the bottom, like we did before. Just let that kind of run onto it. And then we're going to replace the roller. And there's two sides to a roller. There's the top and the bottom. You want the angle side up. The one with the holes on it. With the now that one's that part's done. We'll be putting the cap back on it a little bit with the E clip. Okay, so we have um, the two E clips. I want to show you something about them. There's two sides to an E clip or a C clip. I don't know if what you call these things, but this one here is this is the dull side that's up, and this one here is the shiny side up. Now, when you go to put these back onto the rollers, you want the shiny the shiny side down, and that's because it's got more of a rounded finish, and the the roller will actually roll better on the, on it with this this down so make sure that when you put these back on that you do it with the dull side up so it shouldn't look as good but that's okay that's what we're not we're worried about functionality not beauty but this is what we do we need to turn it make sure you put them this is the wrong way and this would be the right way to put it back on the shaft okay so to put these back on the clips back on you simply set them into place so it takes a little bit of finger dexterity you want to kind of set it right so there so it's right into place. And you reach for your needle nose pliers, and um, you're going to do is just clip, I'm going to switch them one to the side. And I'm going to do the best I can on camera here. You would do this straight on, actually, though. And you push down like that. It clips right on. You would do it straight on like this, but it wouldn't look as good on camera, would it? So that's how you put the clips on. Make sure that the dull side is up and the shiny side is down, and then put them, put on the. Uh, Next up is the washer and the little nut. 
on this flange roller. Put it on like that, and you can tighten them up. I'm going to use it by hand. I'm just going to use the Okay, tighten it up. And he's good. He's rolling good. The one below him is rolling good. So they're all good doing their thing. So we'll spray some of the spray cleaner onto the rag, paper towel, and then we're going to just clean up that. And I'm going to add some of our oil. And as we did before, take the corner of the rag and just pick up a little bit of the bonus from the bottom. And then replace that. And then remember, we're going to use our clip dull side up. Place that back on the top of it. And get our Pliers on it and squeeze it tight. Let's snap in place. And now that's done. And what we'll be doing is um, this has already been lubricated on the top, but we're going to do that one as well. So we've done a really thorough cleaning on the machine, got off all the grease using this mean green, um, super strength mean green. And then any place that we were at the film path, I use a very light of it, light. Um, version which is glass cleaner that's going to be a, a real good use of, of glass cleaner um, it's it doesn't work as good on, on grease but it's really good at, at making sure it doesn't do anything too much abrasive or too much chemical it's a lot lighter of a chemical um, another thing too is we've cleaned up all the individual pieces I've used the mean green or the glass cleaner but most of the time it was the mean green and it gets off all the dirt and all the grime from years and years of just being on top of the machine now we're sitting in bad, in bad conditions. So we can do that with all the panels. And now we're back to the point where we're about ready to put the machine together. So let's take a look at that process. So the beginning of this is going to be to um, do lubrication around parts that need it. Um, the back of this shaft is going to have places where we're going to put some of the, this um, super lube, um, synthetic grease, and um, we're going to use that. Um, this grease is great because it doesn't get hard over time and it doesn't wear out. It's a lot strong, a lot better of a grease than what was available when this machine was manufactured. So what we're going to do is just put a little bit around the contact areas that you'll see how these match up um, as we get to go through them. But there's a couple of little places where they're going to match up on. And we're going to just put, put a little bit of lube on both sides of this as we do this. But you, want, you can be, you know, you can be... I wouldn't say be really sparingly with it, but you can do that. And then um, any place that there's going to be a contact point where there's going to be um, good potential for movement, we're going to put that lube around. So this part over here, the sides over here, um, these, these get a lot of motion. They play on the cam, and the cam is what moves everything into position. So um, what we'll also do is um, put a little bit on the cam itself. Uh, it's probably too much, but uh, we'll put a little bit on the cam itself. And that's what we're going to do. And that should give us enough to get this put back on. Um, another thing I'll do is put just a dash around the outside of this, even though there's some on the other side of it. This is where the two points of that ride on and, um, and I gotta get the one up top here should have some grease on that too so we have all the grease on different spots where this thing makes contact at and um, the next part is going to be just to lay it in place and we left this 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 thing was left loose we took the four screws out of it so it makes it vibrate and by doing that we can now try, try to adjust this back into position on the cam where it belongs at what we did to do with this is we need to push this down below this surface over here and kind of basically fold it up and place it back on the bars where it goes 
So it's kind of a little rotating motion. And you need this this side over here. You see where I'm pointing at right here. That side right there has got to be under this groove and be up next to this cam. This cam rides on the other side of this. So when this knob gets twisted, it moves this this bar back and forth, left and right. So that's how that that's just how that works. And you can still get to all your screws and um, that hold it hold this in place for the motor for the uh, switch to be held back in place. And now we can get back into the screws and put those screws in to tighten it up. And that's the first step of getting this thing back together again. Now the next part of this is kind of hard to explain. But what happens is you have to like actually kind of jiggle this device, the, the actuator bar is what I call this. You had to jiggle this a little bit and try to figure out where things go. For example, there's this piece that we had to reattach, which I had taken off earlier. I had to reattach it back through the things, through the uh, screws in the front. And it activates a bar below it. And that bar moves this roller over here. You can see it see it's moving. So it moves it moves that roller up and down. And it actually does is it moves it up into position um, when that when that roller moves. So you have to kind of pay attention to all the things that are mo moving. Um, and when you do that you'll see that you know so that's that's the roller up there that's being activated up against this um, sound head. And um, that's how that's how this all works. So all these different pieces are interacting with each other. And here's another one that you can see right along here where the bar is actually moving and the spring is pulling that one back. So you have to actually make sure that these things are in the right position when you put the bar on. So that when you get it in place you know that you've gotten it in the right spot because the right rollers are moving in the right way. So it pays to take a little pay a little attention to this and go back to this video and watch it um, but when you're first taking it apart, try to take pictures of all these areas where these rollers come in contact with this, um, the different mechanisms come in contact with this actuator bar. And that will save you a lot of headaches. And pictures, 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 pictures. Grab pictures. Um, can't rely on mine. Just make sure you get your own. Now what else I like to do is, and I don't know if this is ever in any books or anything or not, but I like to take a little bit of the grease and just put it down in between little areas like this one. And you think that's not going to do a whole lot, but there is there is a movement between these two pieces of metal. And hopefully that by doing a little bit of a little bit of grease on there, not a whole lot, um, you're going to have a little bit of uh, additional protection. And it wouldn't hurt to get this guy down here. Just a little dab. Doesn't need a lot. And it's just going to act like a little bit of lubrication on that. Because it is going to make contact and it is going to wear over time, and this is going to actually help the wear. I'm going to drop a little bit of um, grease on the side of this this bar on the spring, and he actually controls this roller above it. I don't think, he, yeah, you can see it there. He controls this roller above it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just put the spring back on, move the roller down out of the way, and then replace the screws and it's under tension so it's not the easiest thing to do but and I'm doing it from the side so please forgive me if I'm not looking awesome at this but there it is and we just gotta get one in there to start it and then we can put the other one in And again, your pictures can help determine where this exactly goes, but I'm pretty sure it goes pretty far to the right. You can see that by moving the handle, this, this roller is popping up and, up and down now. And that's being controlled by that spring work thing here. And the spring acts, acts, adds additional tension to the bar and gives it a little more smoother action. So this little bracket, um, it also fits right over top of this and it gets um, bolted down. And it actuates the actually the upper section of the uh, carriage at the very top. So we're going to bolt that down. Now the other thing is, is that this is actually was cased with grease in it as well. So since it had grease in it before, we're going to put some more grease back inside there and around the shaft itself. So we'll just put it on the shaft itself, I think. 
Maybe not that much, but a little bit. Some grease on the shaft. And then, we can just put it in place. And you can move the, the lever left and for, forward to get it in the right position so that it goes on top of that easily. In the position it's in right now. And we just screw these two large washer screws down on top of it. And you only put one in. That's another thing for when you're doing things with lots of screws or even a couple of screws. Put one in like partial the way. You don't want to tighten them up yet. Because if you do and you get it crooked, you won't get the other one in. Pretty makes pretty much sense, right? Then you once you get it to the place where you need it, you can just crank it on down. And now when we turn this lever, that upper portion of the carriage is moving because of that. Next, we'll take a little bit of the grease and we'll just put it on this one over here. And this is the two where the two bolts are going to go. Remember, we did the back of this already, so it's already been lubricated from the bottom. And if you get too much, you know, you can always take a little paper towel or rag and just kind of get the excess off that you don't need. But just want to have a little bit of coating on that. And then you just replace these and they go on top of that and they hold that whole bar down. So let's go over all the points where this contacts, these contacts are made for the mechanisms. This one down here is the one that controls the uh, upper portion of, of the uh, mechanism. This one actually controls that. Um, this one here moves this little bar right here. This one here is, is hooked into this. Um, it's attached. There's actually attached to the bar back behind it. There's um, a, one that's down here which actually moves this roller here. Um, and that one's on the back of this bracket that you had to reassemble. Over here is a mechanism. There's another one of these that attaches on. And it goes and controls this roller up here. And um, you can see that that moves into position off that little bracket that was reassembled back there. Um, those are the important parts. Now we also have the last one, which is the, one roll, the reverse roller, the one that goes on, on backwards like this. And he actually gets activated into these little notches right here. The back end of it fits into these little notches right here. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to lubricate this, put that back on, and put the clip back on it. Um, and then we'll be really close to having this part of it done. So as you can see, the uh, bar, once you put it back on again, we put some uh, the, the uh, oil on it, and then we've uh, put the bar back in place. And you see it fits right into this little groove. There's a little two little pins sticking up on both sides of it. And then all you have to do now is to reassemble the uh, E-clip or C-clip, I don't know what you call it. And remember, the same rule applies here. We want to get, we want to get the um, flat, dull surface facing up. Okay. And then you just take your needle nose pliers and you squeeze them back on. And when you turn the knob, he moves just like everything else. First. As you're reassembling this, you need to make sure that you get all of the mechanisms working. So when you move the lever, everything engages properly. For example, take a look at this one right here. The bar at the bottom actually controls the carriage up top. So when this portion down here is moved, the upper carriage is moving. And remember to get good pictures before you start doing this. As you take each part apart, uh, don't rely on my video to go through it. Go, as you take the, each part apart, make sure you get a good picture of the thing you took apart. This will help you with the screws that you used so you have a better idea on how to put it back together again. If you open up your projector and you find you've got one of these, uh, these orange belts on it, chances are this thing's going to be making a lot of noise and uh, binding and making all kinds of noise. So what you want to do is you want to change that. So Larry Urbanski of Urbanski Films, they've got a uh, replacement for that. So you just take the old one off. 
And you find it's, it's kind of a plasticky one. It's not as rubbery as the ones you'll get. And you just replace it with a new one. And the just goes up under there, around here like that. And over like that. And it just connects on the bottom. And there you go. It's been replaced. All that's left is to put it back together again. So there's a bunch of covers and things like that. So it's not a really big thing. There's all the mechanicals are functioning and working great. Um, I did test it and everything was great. So I'll take care of that and we'll come back and take a review and see how this thing looks and works. Well, we got it all back together again. Um, been tested, fully functional, everything looks great. Runs nice, pretty quiet, sounds pretty good, nice and smooth. Um, that's one thing about these machines are, they're so easy to thread. You can just pull the, pitch, pull the film through them pretty easily, and you just turn them on. Now this film has some jumps in the beginning. And it comes down and it's actually not a bad film to test with because what's good about it is, is that it's got some bad frames and things like that. And this and the projector resets the loop, which is what keeps it from, you know, messing up. So it's good. It's, it's actually good. It's actually functioning really well. Um, it focuses nice and the framing works good and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good shape. So um, there it is, the Elmo 16 CL uh, with a nice cleaning. Um, we also incidentally showed you how to change the rollers because all you got to do is take the old ones off and put the new ones on. Um, but yeah, that's it. So hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you next time. Um, hopefully really soon.